family. Saint Benedict, the monastic life and Benedictine spirituality. Do you have your toothbrushes? Yes, Mom. Alex, don't forget that a spiritual retreat is about praying, not playing. Yeah, I know. You will be good, won't you? Yes, Mom. Don't worry, Mom. I'll look out for him. It's the bus. Behave yourselves. See you on Sunday. Well, children, I'm very pleased that you've come to spend some days living in spiritual retreat. We've come to speak to God and listen to Him. But how does God speak to us? Sarah? God speaks to us through Holy Scripture, when we worship Him in the most holy sacrament and through our conscience. You're right, and that's why we have to be prepared to hear Him. And how do we prepare ourselves? Yes, Sarah? We can prepare ourselves to hear God by praying and being silent. Very good. Know it all. Well, since we are in a Benedictine monastery... What does Benedictine mean? It means that the monks who live here follow the rule of Saint Benedict. Who is Saint Benedict? I'll tell you. St. Benedict was a great saint who wanted to be very close to God, to hear his voice and do his will, because this is the path to true happiness. We all want to be happy, don't we? Well, the way for us to be happy is to do what God wants us to do, even if it's hard for us. So St. Benedict gave up his studies in Rome and went to a small village called Efinde. His old nurse, whose name was Cyrilla, came with him as his servant. This was quite usual in those days. Efinde was a small village where Benedict could pray in peace. They stayed there for a while until one day something happened that changed his life. Oh, oh the Lord have mercy. No, no, not that one. Cyrilla had broken a very valuable pot which did not belong to her. What will I do now? Can I come in? Come in. What are you doing down there on the floor? Oh, that's my pot. I'm so sorry. How could you do such a thing? I'm truly sorry. I'm so clumsy. That was the best pot I own. Cyrilla was truly sorry about what had happened. So when Benedict came home, she told him all about it. Benedict saw that the pot was very important to Cyrilla. So he picked up the pieces and went to his bedroom. Benedict prayed long and hard and blessed the pieces of pottery. And then a miracle happened. The pieces of pottery fitted themselves together again, and the pot was mended as if it had never been broken. It was a miracle. I saw it. <gasps> From that time on, Benedict couldn't go anywhere without being followed. Many people from the village and from villages nearby went to see him to ask him to perform more miracles. So Benedict had to move away. And this time he went on his own, without Cyrilla, and he set up his home in a cave in the mountainside near a place called Subiaco. There he fasted and prayed all day long. I have an idea. An idea? What kind of idea? 
It's a way to hear God. To hear God? Shh. Keep it down or everyone will hear. Do you remember what Father Michael said? St. Benedict went into the mountains to a place that was isolated. That's how he heard God's voice. You want us to climb a mountain? You're crazy. No, not a mountain, but what's the highest, most out-of-the-way part of the whole monastery? I don't know. It's the church tower. Of course. We'll slip away tomorrow and go climb the tower. It's as high as a mountain, so once we're up there, we'll be able to hear God. Okay. Excellent! This is the perfect spot. Besides, the cross on top of the tower will act like an antenna. If God says anything, we're in the ideal place to hear him. Did you bring a pen and paper? Yep. We have to write down everything God says to us. I've brought the book about the life of St. Benedict. That way we can read about what he did and do the same ourselves. here an hour and we haven't heard a thing. It says here that St. Benedict used to fast. Maybe that's the key. You have to fast to hear God? Looks like it. Come on, let's throw our sandwiches down here. Well, wait. What? I'm really hungry. That's the point. Fasting means being hungry. Don't worry, we'll pick them up later. Some monks who lived nearby asked St. Benedict to be their abbot, but Benedict refused. He said that he lived a very simple life, but the monks begged him to accept, and in the end, he did. Benedict's life was hard. He ate very little and spent every day praying and making sacrifices. Eventually, the other monks grew tired of this way of life and tried to poison him with wine. They tried to poison him? That's outrageous! But God was watching over Benedict, and something surprising happened. When Benedict blessed the wine, the glass broke. Benedict saw that they had tried to poison him, and he left the monastery. I'm not surprised he left. He forgave them and went back to Subiaco, where he began to found monasteries that would follow his way of life. Monasteries like this one. That's right. His motto was, Ora et Labora. Huh? What did you just say? Ora et Labora. That's the secret. Two boys, you say, both around eight years old. Yes. They must be hiding somewhere in the monastery. I'll look for them and tell them to rejoin the other children. Thank you, Brother Albert. Those two specialize in causing problems. They're not bad children, they're just mischievous. Don't worry, Father Michael. I'll search the monastery from top to bottom. What do you think? It must be Latin. Or at Labora. I bet that they're magic words. So you can hear God's voice. Exactly. Maybe God answers when you say the words. Let's try it. We'll yell it from up here. God's sure to hear us. Or at Labora! Or at Labora! Or at Labora! Or at Labora means to pray and to work. These words sum up St. Benedict's spiritual message. It means to pray and to work to turn your work into prayer. How can you turn your work into prayer, Father Michael? Well, by offering it to God and doing it well, because we can't offer badly done work to God. Don't you agree? Not a word, even when we yelled really loud. Ugh! 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 
Is there anybody up there? Yes, up here in the tower! It looks like we found them. You'd better tell Father Michael. I'll go up there and help them down. They're coming to get us! Well, you haven't broken anything. It really hurts! You've just sprained your ankle. How do you know? I'm a doctor. A doctor? Aren't you a monk? I'm a monk and a doctor. I thought the monks were, well, you know, monks. You know what I mean. Saint Benedict, our founder, was a very well-educated man, and he wanted his children, that's us, to study to the best of our abilities. Come with me. I want to show you the monastery library. Shh. We have to keep our voices down because the monks are studying. St. Benedict kept many ancient books and had copies made of them so that they wouldn't be lost or destroyed. So you see, thanks to his work, many important classical works were preserved. I thought that monks spent their whole time praying. Well, you see, if we offer our studies to God, they become a prayer. So yes, you're right. Monks pray all day long because we offer everything we do to God. Wow. Have you had any breakfast? No, my stomach's growling like there was a lion inside. Come with me. This is the monastery kitchen. Let's see what we have here. Here, we bake this bread ourselves. Try it, it's the most delicious bread you'll ever taste. Thank you, Brother Albert, but we can't eat it. Oh no, why not? Because we're doing a spiritual retreat. And what does that have to do with eating? Well, you see, you go on a retreat to hear God, right? Yes, that's right. Well, we're getting ourselves ready to hear him. And that's why we have to fast like St. Benedict. Oh, <laughs> goodness, who told you that? It was in the book about St. Benedict. It says he went up to the mountains to pray and listen to God. And he fasted every day. That's right, but it doesn't mean that you have to give up eating to hear God. That's a relief. We can also eat and give thanks to God for the food. That way you can turn eating into a prayer too. Do you mean that tasty foods and good things can bring us closer to God? Of course. God created the world and filled it with good things. Like chocolate cakes? Or strawberry jam? Yeah, strawberry jam. What's wrong with that? I love it. <laughs> well, yes, we can also give thanks to God for the things that we like. Oh, you're right. Oh. It's delicious. God speaks without words because he speaks to our heart. I don't understand. If God doesn't use words, how can we understand him? Because God makes us realize things. He often talks to us through the advice that our spiritual director gives us or through our friends. At other times, he talks to us through the things that happen to us. The important thing is to be in tune with God. What does that mean to be in tune with God? It means you have to be ready to hear him. And that means you have to be in a state of grace and you have to pray. This is the center of the monastery. The center? Yes. The chapel is the most important room in the monastery. Whatever the monks are doing, whether we're studying or working, our hearts are always here with our Lord Jesus in the tabernacle. There. This is a holy card of St. Benedict. St. Benedict was given some land in Monte Cassino, a small region in Italy and there he built his main monastery. One day, the monks were building one of the walls of the monastery when suddenly... 
Hmm. Huh? Look out! That wall, it's moving! Hmm. Oh, oh, it's gonna collapse! Run, brothers! We have to get out of here! Brother! Oh, no! One of the monks died when the wall collapsed. The monks took the dead man to St. Benedict's cell. They were very sad. There was nothing we could do, Father. Father, it happened so fast. Poor man. Brothers, leave me with him for a moment. As you wish, Father. Lord, please bring this brother of mine back to life. God worked a great miracle through the intercession of St. Benedict, and the monk came back to life. Here, this is a medal of St. Benedict so that you remember to offer the whole of your day to God. That way you'll live according to what our founder said, ora et labora, which means pray and work. You see? They weren't magic words. You're right. Look, on one side there's St. Benedict holding the cross in one hand and the Book of Rules in the other. With a prayer, may we at our death be fortified by his presence. On the others, the cross of the Holy Father St. Benedict. Thank you, Brother Albert. Well, welcome to the group. We're really sorry for going off on our own, Father Michael. That's all right, but please don't do it again. Is that clear? We promise. We were finding out about the life of St. Benedict. God told St. Benedict when he was going to die. So he asked his brothers to dig his grave. Benedict was struck by fever. On Good Friday, he received communion. A little while later, the time came for him to go to heaven. We must have an immense desire to go to heaven. Oh, oh. Look at that. Those monks understood that the light was the soul of Saint Benedict who had died and was going up to heaven. It must be our father Benedict, flying to eternity. That light appeared at the very moment when Saint Benedict had died. Of course. St. Benedict's sister, St. Scholastica, also founded convents for nuns with the same spirituality as her brother Benedict. Look, I have a holy card of St. Scholastica. You know, the night before she died, St. Scholastica asked her brother Benedict to stay with her to talk about God, but Benedict refused. You know I cannot spend the night away from my monastery. I'll come back tomorrow. Scholastica knew that she would die the next morning, so she prayed to God to allow her to spend her last hours with her brother. God heard her prayer and sent such a wild storm that Benedict was unable to leave the monastery. So the brother and sister could be together until daybreak, talking about God and eternal life. The brother and sister were buried together. It's as if Alex founded monasteries for monks and I founded convents for nuns. You know what, Dad? I learned a lot about the life of St. Benedict this week. I'm very glad. He was a great saint. I offered the pain in my leg to God. That little pain is a great treasure for the whole church. I know. 
And I also put a holy card of St. Benedict on the desk where I study, so I'll always remember to offer God the time I spend studying every day. That's great. It'll be your way of living according to St. Benedict's motto, Ora et Labora, Pray and Work.